doot doot. Nobody's home, but you're here. Thank you very much for joining the ground noise and the idiot's guide. <clears throat> the beginner's guide to synthesizers. Look, if you're the drummer, just like me, and finally want to know what the cool kids are talking about, and also if you have tons of synthesizers on your computer and have no idea what to do with it and how to create your own sounds, this is the right video for you. Because I show you a way that will generally work on most of the synthesizers out there, because most of them are basically the same, except their characteristical sounds, special features, and of course... The crazy GUI. Of course I'm talking about software synthesizers that run in your DLW. I assume if you have a hardware synthesizer, you pretty much know what you're doing. Maybe you want to hang out with us noobs anyway, so let's finally start. For this demonstration I'm using the famous Vital synthesizer. Vital is definitely one of those must-have instruments, not only because it's extremely powerful, It also visualizes each and everything very nice and clear. And it's totally free. Can you believe that? So a big shout out to the developers of Vital because they created something really good and give it away for free. What other can I say then? Thank you. But remember, all the things I show you here should basically work in other synthesizers as well. That's the point of this tutorial here. Just load any synthesizer you got and try to follow along. The first thing you want to look for is the OSC, the oscillator. That's the basic sound generator in a synthesizer. I have loaded some basic wave shapes here and will demonstrate four of the most famous ones. The first is this one, the sine wave. The next one is the triangle wave. It sounds almost like the sine wave, only a little bit sharper with more distortion. Then we have a very famous one. The saw wave, you can see, it looks like saw teeth. And then we have the square wave, it sounds like this. Again, square, saw, triangle, and sine. That's your first task, that you try to recognize these basic sound shapes and that you learn to spot them with your ear. Now, this saw wave doesn't sound too exciting, right? So the next thing is that we try to enhance and manipulate the sound. Maybe by adding another oscillator. Now we have two different shapes playing together. I mix it in. Okay, but it's still not really, really super cool. Um, very common practice is to transpose a second oscillator uh, by an octave. Or minus 12 half tones. Mix it in again. This is a very common trick, if you will, to add more weight to the sound. But the sound, to be honest, still sounds very thin. Have a look at the meter here. You can see it's really mono, the sound. There is no movement at all. Very dead. But maybe that's exactly what you are looking for. Dead sound. But we want to have a bigger sound and so we need more voices. Currently we are only using one voice. Let's switch that off for a second. One voice on our precious sound here and uh, let's add another voice you would see there's a big difference although it doesn't sound really nice and that's because our two voices are detuned by 20% at the moment let's bring it down so you can hear the difference hmm one and two voices sound pretty much the same so it needs a little bit of detuning maybe like 5% Slowly it starts to sound like a real synthesizer. So this is definitely something you want to check out in your synthesizer after deciding for a shape. Add more voices to it. Let's try three. Wow, cool. And add the bass again, the second oscillator. I hope so far you get the idea, but let's continue and send our sound through a filter. A filter is kind of a brutal equalizer. It cuts out unwanted frequencies. We refer to it as cut-off. Wow, wow. And also brings up other frequencies. Uh, we refer to it as resonance.
One word of warning here for you. Always be careful when it comes to filtering and resonance and all these things and frequencies in a synthesizer because synthesizers are able to create enormous sub bases and also extremely crazy heights that could easily kill your cat. Do you want that? Now I want a cat to try it out. This is our sound so far as we created it in its original register. But we have following problem. If I play it higher, it gets thinner and thinner. And that's because we are filtering the high frequencies. So what can we do? You hopefully have a function called key track in your synthesizer. I crank it up and now the higher sound is as rich as the original. So remember, if your sound is kind of thin in the higher register, check key track. The next thing we want to do is to change the way how the sound responds to our playing. Right now, when I hit a key, the sound appears immediately and also disappears immediately. You know, it's cool, but it's nothing we want all the time. We change this behavior with an envelope better known as ADSR. A stands for attack. D for decay, S for sustain, and R for release. That's what happens when I stop to play. I think I like this. And you finally know what ADSR means and what you can do with it. Is anything unclear so far? Then let me know in the comments, okay? We continue with another important feature of almost everything that ever existed it's the lfo the low frequency oscillator an lfo doesn't generate actual sound but sends out an impulse that we can use to animate all kinds of parameters for example i connect this lfo one here with the cut off filter and this is what it does Movement, that's what you want to have. Of course, there are ways to change the speed of the LFO. And you can connect it to other parameters as well, to the panorama, for example. I don't know about you, but I can experiment with all of this for hours. Before we continue with the last step, let's quickly resume what we've learned so far. Oscillator 1 was our sound source. We've added a basic shape, a saw wave to it. Then we've started another oscillator with a sine wave, transposed it down by 12 half tones, aka one octave, mixed it nicely together, and then added more voices to oscillator 1 and detuned them to our liking. Then we sent everything through a filter, changed its cutoff and resonance, and learned about key track. We then fooled around with the ADSR envelope and also we brought an LFO to work to add movement to our sound. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the final step of our beginner's guide to synthesizers. All modern software synthesizers come with a rich inbuilt effect section. And of course, you want to spice up your own sounds with some cool effects. Oh, stop! I have some words of advice when it comes to effects, inbuilt effects in a synthesizer plugin. Well, normally when you create your own sounds, there is no good and bad, no right and wrong. It's totally up to you. you do whatever you want. But I recommend to only use the inbuilt effects section of a synthesizer to beautify the sound and not to boost it like over the top. You know what I mean? So I would only add maybe a simple chorus. A little bit delay doesn't hurt. It's not always good, but you know. And of course, maybe a little bit reverb. So this is our original sound compared to this one. That's already enough for me, to be honest. Self-made presets easily sound very washed out in the mix and kind of bleh, because you already did too much in the effects section. And to be honest, in many cases we have even better options to make a sound really epic and good by using all the effects in our channel strip. Okay, not all of them at the same time, you know. <laughs> 
But hey, just like I've told you, do whatever you want. Your imagination and the power of your computer is the only limit. I hope I could help you with this video and if that's the case, please don't forget to leave a like before you go and also a silly comment. That would be very nice. That's it. Have a nice time and much fun with your own sound creations. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Literally most of the all end if not. But hey, 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 ho, hey. Oh.